it isn't going well and he needs an excuse to wear a hat so they go for a walk and she's like are we doing this so you can wear a hat oh my god um and you'll notice throughout the movie they'll cut to these signs with x's mm -hmm. everywhere to let you know like where we are in the movie um something to take note of jessica look those up look up all the x foreshadowing in this like the x one is x-men yeah he has a he wears an xavier uh patch it's time to hack the movies Johanna, I love video games. Everyone knows that about me, but there's one video game I love more than anything else. Is that the game that has global PvP, massive PvE boss battles, and over 600 champions? That's right. We all know what I'm talking about. It's Raid, Raid Shadow, Shadow Legends. Legends. I really love Raid Shadow Legends, and I've been playing it for a few years now, and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of diverse characters and a variety of monsters you can choose to play as or battle. I personally spent a lot of time in the arena. I love this game so much that the last time I got a cat, I named it Raid Shadow Legends. Where's the cat now, Tony? I lost it in the breakup. But that's fine because now I have a puppy and I named it Malik Kavar. Who is Malik Kavar? He's my favorite boss in the game, the guardian of the Void Keep. This guy was a priest of the light at one point, but one night he decided light was nothing without darkness. The other priests were not happy about this and gave him the boot. Lucky for us, he went off to master the magic of the void, so we have a nice supply of void potions to ascend our champions with. Not so lucky for us, he has something of a chip on his shoulder about the whole being exiled thing, so he's not giving up his potions without a fight. He has an ability that deals all the poison damage you could take all at once which can nuke your whole team if you're not careful. Raid has a fresh rotation of the Brutal Hydra boss and a Valentine's Day event where you can get a new champion. So click the link in the description or scan our QR code here and you'll get cool bonuses. Bonuses like the free epic champion, Rector Drath. And 200,000 silver, one energy refill, and one XP boost, and one ancient shard. Available only for the next 30 days and only for new players. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. I can't wait to spend Valentine's Day alone playing Raid Shadow Legends. I am going to be spending Valentine's Day with the love of my life. Also playing Raid Shadow Legends. Play it today! <laughs> oh, hi, Johanna. Hi, Tony. Don't mind me. I'm just reading all my Scott Pilgrim books that I've read many, many times because I enjoy them so much. Have you read Scott Pilgrim books? No. No. Are, are you lying? Yes. Yeah, so we, we, <laughs> we've both read Scott Pilgrim books. Yes. We're familiar with the source material. Y yes. So we're pretty qualified to be in a review about the movie, am I right? No shit. And look, look, I'm not saying if you're going to review something, you know, everyone needs to read the, read the book, but it'd be good if at least one person read the book in yeah. a review about a series of books, because it's not just one little movie. Mm -hmm. It's it's condensing six books into one. You also can't have someone involved with such review that thinks that women can't handle mean comments from the internet. But did you know, I'm assuming you're talking about Justin, did you know? No. He, Justin still, he, he so does yes. no wrong. So yes, this is the famous <laughs> apology because I was left out of the Red Sword Review. And so was I. And so were you. Uh, so I in, I inserted myself at the end talking about all the stuff I do uh, because they just, I don't think they really got the movie. No. Um, uh, and fans were upset that I was not in the episode. But Justin had a really good reason for being in the episode. When he worked at a theater, has he mentioned working at a theater? Maybe like 5,672 times. That's the thing with the show. Yeah. Uh, the people who work at theaters on the show love to talk about yeah. working at the theaters. Uh, he knew Eat, Pray, Love came out the same weekend. <laughs> so that's it? That's, he, that's he, thought, it. he thought that was really important. So anyway, this is going to be a fun episode, and I need a fun episode because I'm very sad. Why are you sad? Well, one... I feel like I don't have enough subscribers as I should. And some days, believe it or not, 
I'm glad uh -huh. you're sitting down. Some days I wake up, and for like a second I think, am I not that famous? And then I don't feel as famous. And it's very devastating for me, because I know that I am famous. You have your own t-shirt line. I do. You have to be famous. I do, I have plenty of t-shirts for sale. When Teespring allows the design to be up, choose me and someone else, friend of the show, who we will not dock, so we'll use our alias, Rachel Dolezal. Stop it. Uh, we both tried to figure out Teespring and why the Tony Peak shirt isn't there. And also- I our, was helping her, by the way. I was yeah. just like, just click button. That's fine. So it's Tony's channel. People, so three people <laughs> couldn't figure it out. She was scared to do the one thing. I was like, just do it. Blame it on me. <laughs> I, said the same, <laughs> I said the same thing. I'm like, just fucking do it. Wow. Oh, I thought you said blame it on Johanna. No, no. I didn't know you were involved, but that's actually smart. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like I'm not famous because enough people aren't subscribed. If you're watching this and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. They should subscribe, right? I agree. I agree because there's so many good things on this channel. I mean, if you're watching, why not subscribe? Why not subscribe? Especially if like you are, you watch all the videos anyway, why aren't you subscribing? Yeah. It's and just a click. Maybe you hate YouTube. Uh, download us on your podcast app of choice. We're on all the big podcast apps. Do you have Spotify? Listen I love to Spotify. us. We all love Spotify. It's a great platform where you can hear this podcast. I never hear anyone complain about it. Have, did you know I haven't been on Twitter in a few weeks? I wonder what's going on there. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm sad about that. I uh, I was supposed to get a tiny house mm. and I didn't get the tiny house. The tiny house was too expensive, Tony. I'm very upset I didn't get the tiny house. I really wanted the tiny house. <sighs> and I'm very, very, very sad. And we're about to talk about this movie about relationships and stuff. And I remember that I'm currently single. You want me to make this worse for you? How could it make it worse? I mean, I'm just single and sad on a normal Monday. Today's Valentine's Day. Fuck! Why did you remind me? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Well, happy Valentine's Day. Welcome to the Valentine's Day episode <laughs> of Hack the Movies, where we're going to talk about Scott Pilgrim versus the world. I did another cosplay. You did. I was going to do Lucas Lee, and I was looking at leather jackets, and I couldn't decide on one. Literally any leather jacket. I've had this my goggles. But I also, I haven't had time to cut my hair, so. Which actually, I literally I was... just pulled this out of my closet. I was like, she wears like an army colored looking jacket. What? Like... Hold on. Hold on. The bangs on your wigs always turn the characters into like Twitter people who complain a lot. They never look like the bangs on the actual character. Okay, so the bangs <laughs> on Lilu with yeah. that wig that I have, there was no way I was cutting those because like absolutely, it's like uh, freaking Scream Three, uh, Courtney Cox. I'm not about to do that, but orange. This one or whatever, it's closer, but like it's a little I, closer. I also have it down further because remember in the previous one, it just kept moving and moving. So oh, yeah. it moves and moves now, even though I kind of have this on better. Cause it's also, def it was definitely a tighter wig too. Like it's actually like fitting my head. Um, yeah. It's not gonna, you know, just roll off my head. When I, whenever I wear a wig, it's great. Do not cut to the interview with the vampire wig falling off or whatever. Yeah, like what? <laughs> Do cut to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, spot, spot, see spot, spot run. Spot pill, so, pill <laughs> See spot run, spot it's pill my bump. favorite movie. No. <laughs> Scott. Pilgrim. I had normal cranberry juice before we filmed this episode. Scott Pilgrim versus I had the world. normal rum a few minutes ago because I wanted to be on your level. You're on the clock. So are you. And I drank normal cranberry and juice. And I drank normal rum. No, that's it's not you're you're yeah. twisting my joke <laughs> and not doing it well. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. When did you find out about Scott Pilgrim? Uh 2000 and five, six, something around then because our mutual friend introduced me to them. Oh, Zach. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you not? Like, last time I said someone's name, you were like, ah! Oh, yes. Let's not, um, let's not talk some. Let me think. What's a normal white guy name? Uh, uh, Kyle. Uh, Okay, so our good friend. 
<laughs> so anyway, yes, our mutual friend, he introduced you to the books. Yes. Yes, he did not introduce me to these books. No. No, a girl I liked in college introduced me to them. It didn't work out. No shit. Happy Valentine's <laughs> Day, everyone. <laughs> yeah, she lent me the first, I believe, three books. And so then all these are yours then? These are all no, okay. these are all mine. I okay. eventually I because I fell in love with the series, I bought them. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say I obviously these are all mine. Um mm -hmm. except for the first one because I wanted my brother's one friend to get into them because she said she liked the movie. So I'm like, yeah. oh, try reading the books. I'll lend you at least the first one. And then I never saw it again. So this is Ian's. <laughs> So, that happens. Yeah. That happens. You lend things, they yeah. disappear. I would never lend this one out, though, because, like, this doesn't exist anywhere else. I mean, shiny. You don't have the shiny one. I don't have the shiny one, you bitch. This is first edition, too. Ah. All of mine are first edition, except for the uh, second one, which is the fifth, Wait, which I don't understand. First, when did this come out? Didn't I? Look, it's in the front. It's like a few pages in. No, a few pages in. There should be, like, a little thing where. No, no, go back. It should... Maybe it's in there. No. No? Really? Oh, is it in this? Do you have this page? Uh, probably. Yes. Yeah. What year did it come out? February 2019. Two, 2019. Uh, 2009. Uh, it's on this page. I'm like shocked I didn't get a first edition then, because I definitely bought these you, new. It's not first edition. What, what edition is that? I don't know. Let me see. Give me. Give me, give me, give me. Was it just a variant cover? It's definitely a variant cover, but... Mm. Oh, no, yours is a first edition. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't get the shiny one. Special thanks to Kanye West. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> That's funny. Special thanks to Kanye yeah, West I, I for got, this episode. I got the shiny cover. Oh. This is like my most par like prized possession. It's not, but it's close up there. I was going to say, you're currently wearing your uh, engagement ring. <laughs> you're holding a book saying it's my most prized possession. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I really fell <laughs> in love with the books and the characters. I related to a lot of what Scott was going through at the time. In my early 20s, they were very... Did you want to be Scott? No, okay. okay. I didn't want to be Scott. Just <laughs> I just happened to be doing a lot of things Scott did, okay. uh, for better or worse. Okay. This is another... All the bad things Scott does, I was doing. <laughs> this is another one of those situations. It's kind of like the like the newer stuff where like people mm. want to be like Rick from Rick and Morty or Bojack. It's the, uh, Bojack if you Rick. idolize them, yeah, you're just thinking it's like, yeah. bruh, like, nah. Yeah. Like, you, you shouldn't want to be Scott, and you shouldn't want to be Ramona either. Did you know Scott Pilgrim ruined a whole generation of women? <laughs> The manic pixie dream girl was a trope way before Ramona. <laughs> and it actually, you know what? Maybe less so in the movie, but in the books, like she's kind of the anti manic pixie dream girl. She kind of like yeah. proves that the manic pixie dream girl is not that great. Yeah. Like they're just, if they're, yeah, they have issues too. And sometimes they can be worse. The movie plays it up a little bit, but the, the song by negative XP, Scott Pilgrim ruined a whole generation of women is really, really funny. It is funny. Because it's more about Manic Pixie Dream Girls in general, but mm -hmm. that's like the big one. She saw Ramona Flowers and felt so empowered by a movie made in Hollywood. Uh, but no, I really love the character. I love the universe. Um, Brian Lee O'Malley, I think, did a great job on this. I have love. Have you read his other comics? I haven't. <gasps> I really want to. I hear they're really good. Mm. Uh, I'll Seconds. find an example. Mm. Um, so he was writing this while he was in Toronto, mm -hmm. and he would like use locations from Toronto and give you the address to where you could yeah, visit. Yeah, so them. they actually have a thing online. Like if you look it up, you can go on a Scott pilgrimage. Yes, and I always wanted to. At the time, Same. my mom had a job, and she was regularly going to Toronto. I remember. And I never got my passport and I was too busy to go, but I always wanted to go and do a Scott Add my Pilgrim. passport, Donna, you wanna be <laughs> friends again? <laughs> I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think Donna or Nicole really wanna hang out with you. Uh, I know. They're, they just can't get over their liberal views. I yeah. know, I know, they're riding with Biden and I, I know you're uh, very against that. Hey, uh, you weren't here in the last Action Hero episode. Who's your favorite Republican that hosted The Apprentice? Donald Trump. Oh, okay, anyway. <laughs> 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 You're gonna piss off some people because they're like, she's dressed like Ramona, but she said the bad guy's name. <laughs> and then they look at my Twitter and they're like, oh, never mind. 
<laughs> where you might even lose or uh, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, the, the characters are great. Uh, again, very relatable when you're uh, just a 20 something broke person uh, wandering around uh, getting into shenanigans. To be fair, Scott was kind of a bum. He was, he was. And I was a bum for most of my twenties. Um, I didn't try to be. I had a little bit more ambition than Scott, but. Yeah, sure. Oh, don't you fucking throw stones <laughs> about who was, who, who was a bum in their twenties. Anyway. I got whatever I wanted in my twenties. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Um, yeah, so apparently there were talks to make a movie like early on mm -hmm. into the comic run. And I know Edgar Wright was involved. And while this movie was being made, I think there were two books still on the way, right? Uh, no, one book. No, yeah, it was the sixth book that hasn't come out yet. It was the yes, yes. It um was still in development, but they were talking before, and I think they were in contact with Brian, like where things are gonna go. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it is interesting because at at some point the books started borrowing some stuff from the movies. There's a thing about the in the end there. Uh, yeah, and the movie is really great. Uh, written by, uh, directed by Edgar Wright. He's great. I'm a big, big fan of. He noticed you at one point. Oh, I'm going to mention that later in the episode. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. That was one of the things the rental reviews fans really wanted to hear about. But instead, they got to hear that Eat, Pray, Love came out the same weekend. <laughs> so, Scott Pilgrim Have first seen Eat, Pray, Love? Because I don't think I've ever watched that who movie ever. Who the fuck would watch it? Yeah. Well, you know who did watch it? Justin Silverman? No, everyone who went to the theater that weekend who wasn't us. Um, so yes, for fans of the book who are really, really hyped for this, who are following the production and whatnot, we all went opening night. We went together. We dressed up. We dressed up. I was Lucas Lee and I was a fucking, I was such a good looking Chris Evans lookalike. I look just like Chris Evans. Everyone says that. God, I was so fucking good looking. Yeah, me too. I was Envy. Woke. I had a super. Woke. No, it's not woke because <laughs> she, she didn't have the yet. right hair color. She wasn't woke yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I had the exact same dress because um, I remember I saw the movie. Oh, no, no, no. I lied. I saw pictures of Envy. Mm-hmm. And like what she would be wearing. The only thing I couldn't find was the um, the strappy up the freaking knee high red uh, uh, leather boots or whatever the hell they were. Yes, yes. But you did have the goblin feet. I thought that was very, you were very dedicated to looking just like <laughs> my feet are not goblin feet. And if I have to, I will post my feet on the internet. <laughs> my Jessica, feet. please do not cut to a picture of Brie Larson's feet. <laughs> Everyone's going to click off. Do not do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Brie Larson's very, very beautiful, but you know, just wear socks, I guess. <laughs> yes, I was, uh, I was Lucas Lee. Our friend, our mutual friend, was Scott Pilgrim. Our other friend was Gideon. Did anyone else dress up, or was it just us four? Um, we your, have the group your picture. your best friend who hates you now and doesn't want to talk to you ever. Who's my best girlfriend? At least one of my best girlfriends. Uh, girl space friend. Okay. You know, she hates you. She was there as Ramona. Oh, she was. Mm -hmm. Do we have to blur her face out in the picture? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, the picture, you can't even tell who the hell anybody is. Like, oh, that's true. My brother was Young Lee. Um, Your brother was there? Young, young Lee. It, young Neil. Young Neil. Yeah. Young Neil. God yeah. damn, I it was a men, It was a men's right. Uh, I can't talk. Men's men rights? I <laughs> didn't say that at all. Whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it was The what? midnight premiere. Um, midnight premiere. It was the men's right premiere. <laughs> I'm gonna slap you so hard. It had an alternate ending. Gideon wins with then, his uh, controlling another mind. Another one of my friends from um, high school. Uh, she dressed as Kim, and then her girlfriend at the time, I think, was somebody else too. Hmm. I have to look at the picture again. We had a lot of fun. I saw this movie in theaters like twice, maybe three times. Definitely twice. I definitely seen it. Yeah, at least twice. I had the poster in my 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 uh, studio apartment, which was so it was so funny. Like things that I was reading in the book eventually happened in my real life, and I'm like, oh, this is real bizarre. I ended up living in a studio apartment with one other guy, and share the bed, huh? Share the bed. We did not share the bed, but that one of us had to sleep in the room while things were happening with the other one. It was very awkward. 
Uh, no. I thought he was asleep. I, I thought he was asleep. Apparently he was not asleep. I wouldn't even do that. Oh my God. And he kept shifting in his bed to kind of like cue us that he was still awake. And I just thought he was having a nightmare. So anyway, um, <laughs> let's talk about the movie. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which is based off the set, the title from the second book. Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about the titles. So we have Scott Pilgrim's Precious Little Life. This is your fourth one. I put it there to... Wow! I forgot mine. I left it on the couch. Hold on. I'm getting to it. Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Scott Pilgrim and the Infinite Sadness. Woke! That's Brie Larson. It's Envy Adams. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim gets it together. Scott Pilgrim to versus the universe. And Scott. What do you mean? Scott Pilgrim's finest hour, which is the last one. Yes. Uh, so they went with Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Uh, like I said, directed by Edgar Wright. Uh, when this movie came out, did not do well. No. I think it was marketed. I mean, the marketing was okay. I liked the trailer and stuff, but the trailer and everything was cool for people who knew what they were going into. Yeah. Other people were like, what is this? I remember people said it looked like Twilight for nerds. Yeah, I can see that. Yikes. I can see that. Um, did, did not do well. Uh, I think one of the things that hurt it was... Michael Sarah was in a bunch of like indie teen romance stuff at and that time. He was time. just a, like the awkward dude or whatever, instead of like super confident dude. Because like, Scott's confident, like he definitely could be awkward and everything. He's not but... super confident. Eh. He, he becomes confident. Dare I? Oh, is this a, in the book? Mm -hmm. You gotta shake your head when you say in the book. He literally like talks about how he's awesome about it. In like the beginning. Well, who's he saying it to? I think because I know. I think I know. His friends. You're... Yeah, but he's like lying because he's dating a high school. Yeah, he's dating knives, which is like easy, and he's he, he's seventeen. He's, he's, he's doing something very easy and acting like it's an accomplishment. I have to pee. Hold on. Sorry, I'll be right back. Oh my god. I, hold it. I can't hold it anymore. So, if anyone to pee, so it's Johanna hour. I'm gonna talk to this camera. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell the story about, uh, my figure since he's gone. Whose hair is this? Anyway. So, I have this figure here. I ordered it from Mondo. Um, I forget what year this came out, whatever. But basically, I waited two years just to get this freaking thing. But I love it very much. Um, it's the limited edition one that comes with Scott in the subspace bag. There's one that just... Uh, do I have it? Yeah! So, it still comes with the other subspace bag, but this one has the squat. So I think I paid an extra like 20 bucks or something like that for it. But um, it was severely delayed. It was terrible. I don't know why I'm closing it because I want to show it off on the thing. Make sure that's in the scene. Yes, it is. Okay, so basically uh, as an apology for the delay, they sent a tiny little pin, which is a, just a Ramona pin, but I didn't bring that with me because I was afraid it would get lost. So yeah, yeah, I love this. It's nice. It's actually on the back. Uh, I'm going to show it off more. Ramona Flowers, American Ninja Delivery Girl, age unknown, everything unknown, fun fact unknown, because that's what's shown about her at one point in the comics or books, whatever you want to call it. Graphic novel. A little Mondo exclusive. Oh, he's coming back. He peed. But yeah. What are you talking about? Talk about my figure. Ah, yes. <clears throat> ah. In the two years it took to get it. I'm sorry. Is that a toy? Yeah, it is a toy. You know what it. I say? Uh, toys are for cool people who should listen to the podcast Peg Warmers and subscribe <laughs> to their channel. It's a very good channel. You've been on Peg Warmers. Twice. I've been on it multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> so what were we talking about? Yes, the movie was a bomb. Michael Sarah was in too many awkward roles at the time. Yep. Which I think turned people off. And yeah, it's a very, it's a very weird, it's kind of, it's hard to say it's a cult classic. I guess it's become a cult classic. It definitely has. Yes, but like the cult was already there because of the books. Mm. And uh, we this will be a in the book episode. I did not have time to reread them, but I've read them many, many times. I you did. are fresh. Yes. 
Uh, but I remember a lot of it. I've been I've been stuck in Frank Herbert's Dune the last month. God, that book is so fucking good. That David Lynch movie. <laughs> it's really funny. I gotta watch the TV edit of it. It's gonna be a whole thing. We have a whole... We're gonna be doing best Dune movie in March. I have not watched the new one yet. I've seen it twice. <sighs> Saw what they did with it. No, the, I lied. I'd seen it three times. And a book full of strong female characters that get reduced in the movies. They finally could have made a movie where they focus on those strong female characters and I saw that they turned one of the male characters into a woman. It's like, but the women are already there. Huh. They're in the book. Just give them bigger parts of the movie. God damn it. Anyway. Um, yeah. So let's just get into this movie. It's a wonderful movie that we love. Uh, I don't know if you love it as much as me. It's definitely... I think you're more critical of some of the changes than I am. Um, not so much, whatever. Um, I mean, I'll talk about it when it gets to it, whatever, but like there was one thing that I was definitely annoyed with. Okay. But And we'll talk about some of the deleted ending when we get to it. Did you ever watch the short that came out on Adult Swim before this came out in theaters? Was it like an animated one? Mm-hmm. I had to have. I don't remember it. Was it with Kim? How he ended up dating Kim? Yes. So you did watch it? I did. Okay. I can't recall it. I did uh, not. It's on YouTube it. if you want to look it up. It's yes. Super easy to find. Look that up. Uh, and we'll I talk mean, about it's, it. it's in the book, but like yeah. it's fun to see it animated. So we start off with a 16 bit Universal logo. Burr, 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 burr. I'm guessing Universal lost a lot of money from this one. Um, and that is to cater to the uh, video game crowd. Now, obviously, I do not play. <laughs> That might have confused people. There was all the video game stuff in the trailer and they might have thought like, oh, this is a kid's film. So they might have not watched it thinking it was like a film for so They and they should have, I think they should have cut out. Cool, you know what? You probably hate that one game then, uh, Siphon Filter. No, that's not a game. That's a way of life. It's a game. No, that's, that is it's art. It's a game, Tony. That is interactive art. It's a game, art. Tony. It's an interactive art. Okay. You're just mad you weren't in the series. Anyway. Yeah, just like a certain canceled show that we're talking. <laughs> uh, I, I said, Siphon Filter and Friends, I said, no Johannes. Um, yeah, you're trying to leech off of your famous friends. You literally <laughs> said that. So, uh, it opens up with Bill Hader narrating. He is the narrator. I think he went uncredited. Not so long ago, in the mysterious land of Toronto, Canada. And we find out that Scott Pilgrim is grooming a high school, dating a high schooler. He's dating a high schooler. Uh, and Kim even calls him out on it. The, the age salt of, of the earth. Excuse me, the scum <laughs> of the earth. The age of consent in Toronto is 16. So he's, he's not doing anything illegal, but it's definitely mm, creepy. He's 23 and she's 17. So yes. Mm. If I were 23 and I was dating someone that could not go out and drink with me, I'd be like, mm, no. Yeah, what was that? I was like 22, 23, and I dated that 19 year old, and I was like, never doing this again. Never doing that. That wasn't as, like, we were closer in age, but yeah, it is. It's funny how, like, 20 and 21 things change a lot. Yeah. It's like, I, I'm like, wait, you can't come to the bar with me? I'm like, nah, eh, this ain't gonna work. Um, the happiest moment of my life was in 2010 when I turned 21. We were in the, uh, I was in a basement party at Temple. I was like, this fucking sucks. And I was like, wait a minute, I could just go to a bar. And oh then I God. did, it was great. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yes, he's grooming a high schooler. Uh, I love all the graphics that are inter introducing people with the little black boxes, which mm -hmm. is very, they really made it feel like the comic yeah. in here. Uh, and I also, love- casting's great. The casting's great. Yes, uh, I think every character is done well. Yeah. Uh, some are definitely reduced. Obviously, subplots are cut out, but when you try to shove six different books into one movie, that's going to happen. Good thing there's a series coming out. Is that what the, is the series going to be? It's an animated series. It's going to be the whole thing. Okay. What, what's it coming out on? Netflix, I believe. That ah, out. Um, so, yes. <laughs> Like that Godzilla series was fun, but it wasn't made for Netflix. This is made for Netflix. Out. Kim sucks. I don't like Kim. Kim's great. Kim needs to get the fuck over it. The, the subplot is she was dumped by Scott and she's really upset that she's dumped by Scott, but she hangs out with Scott all the time. She's real miserable. 
Um, but yeah, she sucks, and she's currently ruining Star Trek. She's in that well, awful Picard show. You can continue reviewing this by yourself. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. I'm going to go home to my fiance. No, no, no. We got to talk about Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking about you. Um, <laughs> she's currently ruining Star Trek. She's in the awful Picard show. I saw she was in that. I, I didn't watch it. I don't care. Oh, God. I saw the first trailer and I went. Nope. Yeah, I don't care. And I was a J.J. Abrams apologist for that first one. Mm. And Is it, he a uh, part of the show? Uh, no, but everything no. after that has been terrible. So yeah. well, Beyond yeah. was fun. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, they finally rock out because uh, Knives shows up. Knives Chow, Ellen Wong, who was in, I didn't finish the show, uh, Glow. She's on the show Glow. Never watched it. She's also in a movie called The Void, which is pretty good. Eh, it's okay. Uh, yeah, She's a cutie so, pie, though. Huh? She's a cutie pie. Yes. All the girls in this are cute. Mm -hmm. Not so much Alice and Phil. But the other girls are cute. She's ruining Star Trek. Anyway. Um, yeah. One singular woman ruining it. Not the people who wrote the show or no, anything. Patrick Stewart is ruining that show. <laughs> What if the character was more like me? And it's like, well, that doesn't really make sense, Patrick. But. Oh, cool. That's just like, um, was it the the new uh, Sex in the City show where uh, they're f having the one character literally be everything the actual actress is? Samantha? Oh, no. I w Samantha got the fuck out of there. She's like, I see this shit show. I'm done. Bye. Well, Samantha's not in the new show? Nope. No. No, she, ha she hates uh, Sarah I know. Jessica. I know. I know. <laughs> I was aware. I mean, her not being in it, that's also ruining it. But yeah. Yeah, so the opening title sequence where he's rocking out and like knives has fallen in love with him is awesome. I like the fat, like the camera just pulling back. People say it's style over substance, but it's like no, it's capturing the un, like the fantasy look of yeah, a comic book. And also like the cinematography is fucking amazing. It's awesome. Movie. Like what? And the uh, yeah, I love the title sequence. How each name they have like visuals yep. that correlate to the character, and then I see Brie Larson's name and I scream woke. I'm a, I'm a man on YouTube, so when I say Brie Larson, I have to scream something about wokeness. It's it's, it's a requirement, actually. I'm, li I'm licensed. I'll be kicked out of the angry male YouTuber guild <laughs> if I don't do it. <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, Scott lives in a shitty studio apartment like I did in my early 20s. Huh? Across the street from his <laughs> From, from his house. family home uh, with my good friend Kieran Culkin. Yep. Remember I reviewed Big Trouble in Little China with Kieran Culkin? Cuts of the video of me with Kieran Culkin. Uh, I just want to say, thanks for coming out, man. I mean, oh, thank you. Where Igby goes down, Scott Pilgrim, you were great in thanks, that. Man. And uh, I really love that. I really love oh, that cool, movie. cool. Yeah. Did, did you like uh, Signs? Yeah, you were great in that too. Thanks, yeah, thanks, yeah. yeah you cool. looked a lot younger than you were at the time you filmed it. I was actually kind of, that was special effects. <laughs> I mean, right? fine wine. Uh, Scott's sister, played by... Twilight Star. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my God, why am I blanking on your name? Um, oh my God. Are we both blanking on her name? Fucking. It's gonna make me so mad. It's that, that. Oh my God. It begins with a J, doesn't it? No. No. no? His sister is. What's her face? I can literally see her face. The girl from Pitch Perfect. Voice. Do we have Pitch Perfect anywhere? Hold on. Oh my God. How did we forget her name? Fucking, um. Oh my God. Anna Kendrick. Anna, Anna Kendrick. Kendrick, Anna Kendrick. Oh my God. Scared the shit out oh, of me for terrible. a second. <laughs> His sister, played by Anna Kendrick, is uh, mad at him for dating a fucking... 17-year-old? Scandal. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and even he, even she's just like, uh, I think this is a rebound for you-know-who. Woke! Brie Larson. Um, Stop. <laughs> I like when I scream woke and echoes. <laughs> uh, yeah, because that's the whole thing. So Scotty's like, he's dating Knives. But they're not doing anything. It's just, they almost held hands once. Like. Yeah. But it's just a girl who thinks he's great. And that's what he needs to hear. Or thinks he needs to hear. Because he had a horrible breakup that wrecked him. And he's not gotten over it. So this is a rebound. This is what we call a rebound. I've had several rebounds. I've been several people's rebounds. It's a, it's a re It's not fun. Don't do it. Um... I mean, in your early 20s, do whatever you want. Just make sure they're not in high school. You can get in trouble for that. Oh, my God. <laughs>
Oh, and I have it here. I never got uh, because Scott like even visits her at the high school yep. with Wallace, and Wallace is like, "This is I don't like this." <laughs> Do you want to know who my class is gay? <laughs> he goes, yes. Does he have glasses? <laughs> uh, I never got the older guys who hung around high schools. We had a few hung around our high schools. I'm probably thinking the same person you're thinking oh, right I'm now. I'm 100 percent thinking of that person. <laughs> Just like, mm. what, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing, buddy? What's what's wrong? See, so, yeah, I never got the guys who hung around high schools or like wanted to date high school girls. It's weird to me. I don't know why you want to date younger people. Go to older people. They're more experienced. Now, nah, but older women aren't into younger guys. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're the exception. Um, <laughs> cradle robber. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> so yeah, uh, cuts to them at the arcade, and now this scene is to establish. You now people say we just recap the movies, but I'm, I'm giving you some background here. Mm -hmm. We go through the movie and we tell you different things about it. So this scene with the fighting game is to establish that Scott knows how to fight and he's good at it, even though if it's based off video games. Yeah. So like later on when he's doing all these moves, you got introduced to it early. It's not like they just came out of nowhere. Yeah, like in, in the actual book. Again, game. it's exaggerated. It's not realistic, yeah. but. I mean, the whole thing, uh, but like in the book, when the actual fight goes down uh, between. Uh, 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 shake what? your head, shake your head. No, no, in the book, you gotta do that. That's, it's a requirement. In the book. Um, no. Uh, when he actually does get in the fight later with uh, the first evil ax, it's pretty much established because um, number one, if you saw the short mm. before the game, uh, the game, the movie came out, um, it already shows he knows how to fight. And also um, when, because uh, obviously you know we didn't have a short before the book came out, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's just shown that all his friends already knew. They're talking about like don't don't they know that like he's like the best fighter we have in this area? Blah blah blah. So like no. it's a known thing. Yes. Even though it did kind of come out of nowhere with this, but it made sense because everybody was on top of it. No one was like shocked. Yeah. Uh, but for the movie, they add this scene here. And there's a lot of foreshadowing here. Uh, them teaming up to beat the bad guys in yep. the game. The Nega Ninja. Yep. Which, oh, I don't have it here. We have a Nega Link toy somewhere. And I'm mad I just said Link because I had a setup for a Zelda joke where I pretended not to know his name, but I just ruined it. Anyway. Um... Where are we at here? Oh, he tells her the Pac-Man story that everyone knows. Everyone already knows the Pac-Man story. We all know. They changed it because they thought that Pac-Man would be too easy to vandalize. You know, like people could just scratch off the P and turn it into an F or whatever. We all know it. You're not cool. <laughs> Fuck, man. <sighs> Ironically, I would yeah. totally play Fuck Man over Pac-Man. Huh. <laughs> it's a man who fucks. Sounds awesome. Not you. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. <laughs> Should have bought chocolate. Are you crying? No, I don't cry. Oh my god, this is the first time I've seen you cry. Could you imagine crying in a YouTube video? It's embarrassing. Um, you know, it was a fun Valentine's Day. And this was mentioned on rental reviews. The, uh... Give her a minute. The, uh... Strip Club Valentine's Day. Joanna wasn't there for that. Uh, well, she wasn't there to tell the story, but remember that shit show? For anyone who doesn't know, would you like to tell the story of what happened? No. You can tell the story. All right, we mentioned it in the rental reviews for Roadhouse, which I think is a good episode, and I don't feel like covering Roadhouse again. You can check out my good friends, uh, Good Times, Great Movies podcast. We're actually local. I got to film with them soon. Uh, I covered Roadhouse a second time on there. I'm done talking about Roadhouse. I mean, I'll never be done talking about Roadhouse. I love Roadhouse, but I'm done reviewing it. I've done it multiple times. He's not a true fan. No, I am a true fan. Not it's true just like covered it so many times. Not a true fan? Uh, yeah, me, Johanna, and Justin, the one year we were all single, we went to the local strip club and it, uh, there were shenanigans that happened. Uh, I don't know if shenanigans is the word. It, uh, to, to quickly wrap it up, well, we had a good time. I think we all had a good time. Oh, yeah, I was drunk as shit. Yeah, there was a girl there who... Uh, we assumed worked there. We thought worked there. It came to our attention. We did not... She did not work there. She is uh, what we call a lady of the evening. And she was there cruising for sad, lonely guys. <laughs> And she found two of them. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, she, she, but she hyper fixated she, on one. <laughs> she saw Justin. She's like, that's my guy. So she gave him like a playing card, which I guess was secret code, but no one knew what it meant. She also like scratched the shit out of him. Yes. 
Uh, but eventually security tried to get her out and they were like roughing her up. And yeah, she because like, she like ran to the back and she's like on the pole and stuff. Yes. She was, a it was very, like a closed off area. It was one of those things where you tell security, they're like, if we rough her up, she's a very tiny woman. We're going to break her. Let's call the cops and let them deal with it. And then literally the night ended with me, you, Justin, and all the strippers looking at the security camera and just see her punch the cops in the face. <laughs> Because <laughs> it and like it wasn't even like around the bar where the security footage was. It was like near the front. So literally, it was like a bunch of people just huddled in the front looking at this, whatever. And I'm just like, oh my god! Including the girl you got a lap dance from. Yep. Like we were all just like, hey, I know we were all having a good time. But let's all watch the security <laughs> We're Like, oh shit, she just punched her right in the face. So uh, yeah, she uh, she got in deep doo doo. Ugh. Also, a cop made fun of your car. And then I was like, that. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we mentioned this. Uh, they show some real life locations from Toronto, yep. which you can, again you can find in the book. I think a couple of them have been demolished or remodeled, but I, the castle is definitely still there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the staircase. Aubrey Plaza is mean to Scott, uh, and he's totally not Julie, over Julie Powers. Julie Powers, yes, uh, and he's totally not over Envy. He's very, very into her still. And Knives asks if he reads Envy's blog. You know whose blog I used to read? Edgar Wright's. He wrote a blog about me. So we did a show called Space. Great show. Great show. We watched that together, yep. right? Yeah. You got me super into it. Yeah, that was a good fucking show. And there was going to be a flash mob in England that year. Or like the one week where they were going to like reenact the, the finger gun yeah. scene from Space. And I wasn't able to go. So me and my friends in the film lab of Bucks County Community College... One of them who became a big YouTuber. Uh, we we did a parody of the scene and I post about it in one of Edgar Wright's blog, like the comment section of his old blog. I don't think he has it anymore. It was called Edgar Wright here. He, was up, he wasn't he was as big as he is now, too. So Yeah, like I think it's been archived since then. Uh, but he saw it. He saw wait, saw wait. I said it with a W. Huh. Saw wait. <laughs> Uh, and he wrote a whole blog about it. He posted it. And it was my 15 minutes of fame. He friended me on Facebook. We never talked. He friended me on Facebook. I DM'd him. Never got a response. Uh, but I was friends with him on Facebook. No one could deny that. <laughs> um, yeah, and that was like a big deal. I was like a total hot shot. And then he released the trailer for Scott Pilgrim two days later. And everyone stopped watching my video. So um, Scott has a dream where he's alone. Uh, and this is where we first see Ramona s roller skating yep. through his dream. And he wants to make out with her. Scott sleeps in a bed with his gay roommate and his boyfriend. Awkward. <laughs> like, does, does Scott, like, like face the corner while they're doing their thing? or I don't think they do the thing while he's in the bed with them. And they, like, go for a walk. And I think so. Because it, they definitely, like, kick him out sometimes in the book, so. Mm -hmm. Like, he has to go, like, stay somewhere else. I'm not, why don't they get two mattresses in there? And put it where? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, at that point, I'd be like, all right, well, I'm sleeping on the armchair. By the way, this whole movie is like, look how shitty their apartment is. And my studio apartment, I'm like, this is way nicer. They have a kitchen island. The fuck? I didn't have that. Yeah, I like when they, um, I had a fireplace that wasn't able to be used. Oh my God, like later on when they were like eating on the floor and I'm like, why don't you just get little bar stools like from like a thrift store and just eat <laughs> at the island? Like what? Uh, Scott sees Ramona Flowers. Yes, he does. And he becomes obsessed with her, much like I did when I saw the movie Grindhouse and saw Mary Elizabeth in that cheerleader uniform. And I've been obsessed with her ever since. She's very attractive. She's also a- Fuck you and McGregor. She's also a Amazon delivery girl. Yeah, she's Back very- Back when Amazon just delivered books. She's very, very into making Jeff Bezos a lot of money and really wants him to thrive. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> just, the, Ryan Long put out a short skit that was really funny. He's one of the best no. comedians out there today. I'm breaking character. I'm aware of the Spotify controversy. Uh, you know how Neil Young pulled from Spotify? And he went to Amazon Music. Dude, I'm not paying attention to that shit. So Neil Young pulled from Spotify and he went to Amazon Music. And Ryan Long did a whole thing. He's like, we have to fight misinformation by supporting companies like Amazon. We have to do it. The whole joke is like Amazon is also a shitty company just for different reasons. Yeah. Ryan Long's really funny. He followed me back on Twitter. Please come on the show, Ryan. 
please. Please come on the show. Um, at least I'm trying to get YouTubers to come on my show this Valentine's Day. I'm not like texting old hookups to, <laughs> to hang out with me this Valentine's Day. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they're all moms now. Anyway. Um, Mills. Huh? What? Julie's party sucks. It sucks. Shock. I'm gonna go pee due to boredom. I love that. It's gonna I'm suck. Gonna go pee due to boredom. <laughs> and then uh, Como, right? C O M E A U. Pretty, sure. Pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, he knows everyone, as his little infographic will tell you. Uh, Scott pulls up a drawing, a rough sketch of Ramona, which actually was done by Brian Leo Malley. Yeah. He's like, you see a girl who looks like this. In, uh, the, in the book, he just does this. You know, a girl with hair like this. Yeah, he's like, look like this. Um, so Scott uh, meets Ramona finally, and he is the fucking worst at first impressions. Because this is like an actual woman, not like a manipulative or easy to manipulate a uh, high schooler. Like he has to actually work at this one, which is the theme of the movie, which a lot of people don't really notice. Um, yeah, so he talks to her about video games and hey guys, don't break the ice by talking to women about video games because and women know that and they won't think you're a real man. Are you right? Am I right? Me and my fiance literally likes play video games together all the time. You and don't we're... count. Oh yeah, I forgot I'm an odd case, you know? <laughs> fucking, you <laughs> I forgot they used to have a frame. Who's the fucking video game character he had framed on his desk? He <laughs> oh, I did that because he, he, so he was going through a break off or whatever. This is before me and him were even like doing anything. And he was going through a uh, break off and he still had a picture of his ex in that case, whatever, and then he flipped it, but he still just had the thing just sitting on there. And I'm just like, I got that. Cause I liked him as a friend. I was like, I got this. So I, I went and pronounced, uh, it's Aqua from Kingdom Hearts. And I put that in there. And then he thought it was, that. he like, thought it was, he thought it was so fucking funny that he just kept it. Okay. Well, and now we're getting married. Okay. That's the exception. But when you talk to real women, um, they don't like, the shit, I'm not a real woman. <laughs> they don't like, oh. Talk about crypto. I feel like women love crypto. Talk about NFTs. They love that. Yeah, don't do um, that. <laughs> I like in the- um, If you need dating advice, ask Tony. He'll oh help God. you out. I like in the book, um, because they don't go into it uh, in the movie at all, the subspace stuff. Yeah, They don't the talk about it at all, because yeah. when they originally meet, he asks her, am I dreaming? And she's like, oh fuck, like he probably remembers me from using his head. Yeah, she- she explains it in a later scene mm -hmm. very briefly because yeah. the subspace stuff in the book ties into how the book series ends, but yep. that's kind of ignored for this. Um, and also how she's able to get around so fast and like what yes. is in the first place and why but, she has that bag. But I love where he's like, I'm going to leave you alone forever now. And she's like, thank you. Like, <laughs> she's just like, yes, please, for the love <laughs> of God, leave. Um, so yeah, everyone knows Ramona there. She's like a big deal. She's American. Is that like if I go to Toronto, everyone would be really into me because I'm American? They're not going to be really into you, Tony. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> um, Aubrey, uh, sorry, Julie mm -hmm. yells at Scott for breaking up with girls and sleeping around. I feel personally attacked. Um, and this is where you see like Kim is still like heartbroken about it. She's like, remember Kim? He's like, we're totally cool now. It just cuts to her giving him the death glare. And isn't there like a, like a screech sound too? <laughs> <laughs> okay, me and Kim are all good now, all right? This movie is so good. <laughs> it's so good. And I know it's cool to hate on this movie now for some reason. And I'm sure like the fan base and there are people like it, but there are bad people on every fan base. There are not crazy the hack the movies fan base. They're all great. They're throwing money at you that you turned down. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh so yeah, he uh goes home and he's telling um Wallace, who is very drunk. Guess the, who's drunk? <laughs> I guess Wallace. You guess correct. And, he, and then he like flings the key. <laughs> he hits him in the face with the keys. Uh, but he's talking about how great Ramona is. He's like, yeah, you should probably break up with your fake high school girlfriend. <laughs> and he's like, well, he's like, break up with your fake high school girlfriend. Sister calls, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, so the next thing. <laughs> I forgot. Wallace is already asleep. But he's he still mad at the texter. <laughs> so the next day, um, what you call it? Scott Pilgrim is ordering something from Amazon. Yeah, probably some type of book. I oh god, I gotta confirm this. I think they said uh, what was in the package was like a special edition of Hot Fuzz or something. I oh think I god. remember reading That's that. Funny. I don't know if it's true. Um, so yeah, he orders something just to get her at his place, uh, which is really funny. Not gonna lie though, it's very relatable when he originally buys the thing and then he's waiting by the door. That's me whenever I buy something too, even though I know it's gonna take forever. But like, I love watching packages like be moved from state to state. It's my favorite thing. It's like, oh, I'm getting a present soon. You don't like watching your packages track? No. Oh. I just see if it's close. Cause I'm always oh. disappointed. I'm like, it's not here yet. But then it's gonna be here soon. My bear suit's not here yet. I ordered oh. it last week. Last stuff game. <laughs> anyway. Um, yes, uh, he gets the email from the League of Evil Exes, and he skims well, it. Well, it's just... Um, Ma Matthew... Patel. Patel, yes. It's from him, but he's telling him about the League, and he totally ignores it because he's an idiot. Yeah, he get, In the book, he gets the email and a letter. Yeah. And Scott just ignores both. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, he finds that he for forgets that he was supposed to hang out with knives. And I love the... You were supposed to pick me up a half hour ago. He's like, oh, how could I forget? <laughs> Uh, and he's hanging out with her and he's just ignoring her because he's totally into this other girl. I've been there. Relatable. Again, I relate to all the awful things Scott does. Are you Nega Scott? <sighs> no, because I guess Nega Scott would be the nicer Negus one. No, Nega Scott's all, like, literally all the bad things. Well, not in this movie. This movie's completely Well, different. yeah, then he's a nice guy <laughs> at the end and it's wasted. And um, yeah. Look, my early 20s, it was... It was very yeah, dark. you were a terrible person. <laughs> yeah, I'm biting my tongue on you. Okay, okay. I'm just saying. You were no princess. There's a nice track record of like these nice women and you dated them and then all of a sudden they're the crazy ones. I'm just going to point that out. I think it's you. I think you're the problem. One of them tried to fight you in a bathroom. It's a, is she? <laughs> She's crazy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anyway. <laughs> so one, at least one. Yeah, at least one. <laughs> okay, okay. Mind my business. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is where we get Nega Ninja, the foreshadowing mm -hmm. there. Um, and then we find out about this uh, subplot about the Battle of the Bands in Toronto. The Toronto Battle of the Bands. The T B O B B O whatever. Um, and if they win, they get a record deal with G Man. Yep. Who is G Man <laughs> Graves? Who knows? Uh, That's not a plot point. Yes. Uh, and then Scott P's, and we get the P bar. Yeah. It's pretty funny. And then some music from Zelda plays. Now, I don't play Zelda games, so what music is this from? I don't remember. It's the do, 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 do. Oh, the dun, 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 dun. Uh, I know what you're talking no, about now. it's slower. Yeah, but like it, over top of that, like during the actual track, it's like. No. Oh. It's all like mystically. Well, what's the music? Um, I think it's just the menu music, if I remember. Like fake nerd. Um, but yeah, he sees Ramona again. Whatever. Uh. And then this is where he wakes up and realizes he's at the door. And he's like, I just had a dream about you. And I love that the music starts playing again. Uh, and she says, you have a subspace highway through your head. That's very, very convenient. And they never really talk about it no. again. She has like a bunch of weird powers that they just never go yeah. into, which I kind of like. It's fun. Um, eh. It's fun for this because you're in a you've already established you're in a weird world. So it's fine. And she kind of brings the weirdness to his world. Like things well, are kind of yeah, technically normal. supposed to be like a whole thing because she's talking about it in the book. Like, oh, how like you guys don't have this in Canada? Apparently, it's like an American. Power. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like, I forgot you don't have that here. <laughs> um, they apparently did a bunch of takes to get him to throw the thing in the trash can because they didn't oh want to fake it. Yeah. Just fake it, sure. guys. We got. There's a lot of things that. Do Not that everybody can be Sigourney Weaver and just making that shot. Yeah, yeah, so guys. There's there's a lot of things. As someone who's been on like film shoots, it's like let's just wrap it up, guys. You're not gonna get it in one shot. Um, 
So yeah, he just throws, he never even opens the package and she agrees to go on the date just to get him to shut up. Not a good way to get a date. Not a good way to get a date. So Ramona is talking about her ex, Gideon. Do they have a relation to G-Man Graves? Anyway. Uh, yes. Uh, they talk about their past and uh, how they've recently been in some bad breakups. Her more than him. Yep. Uh, and then they go through a magical door to her apartment. I knew, I knew some people in college that did like a hipster artsy short film where there was a door in a field. I don't even think Scott Pilgrim came up with that. I feel like that's been a thing for a while. Probably. But I was just like, all right. All right. Um, but yes, apparently when they're in there, she they say she memorized all the names of the T's. Instead of reading them, she wanted to memorize oh. them. Well. Honey, liver disaster, ginger with honey, ginger without honey, vanilla almond, white truffle, blueberry chamomile, vanilla walnut, constant comment. I mean, they could be lying. But that's the story they mm -hmm. tell is she memorized every single name of the tea and just like winged it like that. I have in my notes, Scott walks in on her getting changed and they make out and I hate Michael Sarah and Ewan McGregor. Oh my God. Yeah, he was uh, waiting for a blanket because it was cold. Mm. And... He went to be like, hey, what's going on? And then she was getting changed. And you got a nice little little view there. And then apparently uh, she was just going to get the blanket from her bed. And then he was super smooth. And he's like, maybe we both should get under it. And I was like, bruh, <laughs> you go, boy. <laughs> it was very smooth. And then, yeah, then they, they start kissing. And then they're about to do the hanky panky. And... And this, I've definitely used the. Uh, oh no, I spilled something my on my shirt so in college. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I guess I'll just take it off. In the book, he's uh, less willing to um, have sex with her because he's definitely still like scared. scarred and yeah. scared because he hasn't done anything in like what? How long was it? Like it's at least like seven, six months, maybe closer to a year that like his breakup with Envy was. I can't me remember specifically. But why are you counting with your fingers? <laughs> Five. Anyway, let's keep going. But yeah, um, in this, it seemed more like, oh, she's making the decision. Yes. Like, mm, I'm not going to do it yet. I yeah. want to ruin a maybe good thing. Yes. Yes. Uh, good on her, I guess. What are you doing? Texting my fiance. God, it's like that Seinfeld episode. Oh, my fiance. Has anyone my seen my fiance? fiance? <laughs> it's okay, we're assholes sometimes. Sometimes I'll walk around and we'll just be like this. Like, <laughs> it's great. It's nice to have someone to love that loves you back genuinely, deals with your shit sometimes. It's just nice. Still no matches on Tinder. Um, <laughs> Maybe that's your first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she doesn't have uh, sex with him. Um, what was I going to say here? Uh, oh, so Knives is like real excited to uh, go to this band and Ramona's down to go to the band and I have it Chicks will see any lame guy's shitty band, but won't watch a cool dude's YouTube channel. Yeah. It's less work. That didn't do me any favors I in mean, college. You can go out and you can get a drink and maybe listen to some good music. If not, you just fucking leave. <sighs> I love that Scott invited his lady friend and his fake girlfriend to the same thing. <laughs> I love the shot of them all looking at each other, <laughs> especially uh, when um, Anna Kendrick's character of... Uh, Scott's sister, um, mm. Stacy. Oh, she's loving it. What? She's loving this. That he invited both of them. Oh no, not even that. that just uh, when she introduces Wallace to her new boyfriend. Oh yeah. And like, there's a scene of everybody looking at each other, and there's Wallace with a smile looking at the boyfriend and the boyfriend. Oh yeah, like, well, Wallace is trying to uh, cuck Stacy really yeah. bad, and he does. Yes, and then yeah, Knives shows up, and again, relatable. It's like, uh oh, the two girls <laughs> I'm seeing are suddenly at the same thing. Uh oh, what do I do? We've all been he there. He runs away. Uh -huh. <laughs> he just runs away. <laughs> he runs away. <laughs> well, I would tell you about the t the time the two girls ran into. It. Oh god, I was seeing one girl I used to work with, <sighs> and then I uh, asked another one out, thinking like, oh, they won't bump into each other, even though they live a few blocks apart. Turns out they bumped into each other. <laughs> And the woman's like, how are you doing? Like, oh, I'm actually going on a date with that Tony guy soon. And the girl went, what? 
uh-oh, that was a rough day for Tony. <laughs> um, so I, I really, again, very, and that had happened before I saw this. So I'm like, yeah, this is, this is really hitting all those spots. <laughs> Actually, when I watched this with my dad, he thought this was the funniest scene in the world. I just remember him, like he, I think I don't even think he finished the movie, but he was cracking up when this happened. <laughs> yes, so they have to play against Crash and the boys and Crash was in Scream 4. He's the vlogger. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he dies. Oh, he's the one who's like, I'm gay, but he's not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or maybe, I don't oh, remember. I, have you seen Scream 5 yet? I haven't seen it yet, but I know someone survives and it makes me very happy. Yeah, a lot of people say that, yeah. Yeah, I uh, saw that and I was like, yes! <laughs> people are saying I don't have to take you guys out to dinner because Matthew Lillard was actually in the movie. But he wasn't physically in the movie. He, he also didn't play Stu in the movie. Yeah, so. Well, apparently the Stab 8 killer might be Stu in that film universe, but. No. I want my dinner. Luckily, you two haven't been here at the same time in a while, so I haven't been able to do it. Um, <laughs> next week, bitch. Pew, pew. Literally so yeah, next week. <laughs> uh, Scott's sister is trying to sabotage Scott. She's a bad sister. Uh, she's like, yes, yeah, so how do you know Scott? Oh, Knives, how do you know Scott? <laughs> uh, and this is pretty funny. So they're playing the song. Crash, yeah. I love Crash's songs are like two seconds long. <laughs> Thank you. Not a race, guys. <laughs> so sad. We, this one's for you. It's called it's, We Hate No, it's These not dogs. a race, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this is one-liners are pretty great in this. Um, so Edgar Wright, when he was doing this movie, even though it's all in Canada, it's like his first like made in America movie. Yeah. Uh, or for like American production, he really wanted to differentiate, wanted to differentiate himself from the previous films, and he went out of his way not to cast any like English British actors. But uh, what's his name? Satya Baba uh, masked his accent, and he got cast in the film, even though he is a British actor. That's really funny. Who's like, hey, I don't want to be known as just the British guy. I want to have all this stuff. But this guy really wanted the part. So he just didn't tell him where he was from. That's really Did funny. the accent <laughs> and he got in it. Uh, but yes, he shows up as Matthew Patel, mm -hmm. the first evil ex-boyfriend. And uh, so each like boyfriend has a type of like fight related to their kind of character. Yep. And his is totally a Bollywood fight, especially with like the standing still and crazy stuff going on. Uh, I fucking love this fight. Yeah, it's great. It's awesome. I love the song. I, I like that they turned it into a song. Yes. Because like it was supposed to be a back and forth between him and it's Scott. It's a back and forth and they it, change yeah, it. Yeah, and they change it into like, it's just all Matthew. Yes. So Ramona tells the backstory. She dated him in seventh grade. And they actually use the stills from the comic. Yes, they, they animate the artwork from the comic, which is really, really cool. Uh, So he has mystical powers. Yep. And uh, he summons demon hipster chicks and yep. they're like terrifying looking. They make me they real. They call him daddy. I thought they said. Or is it Maddie? I think they call him Maddie. Tell Maddie. I'm gonna say it's Daddy. <laughs> I think it's funny. Uh, yeah, something about them really makes me uncomfortable. Like their teeth are just like, yeah, scary. Don't do that. You're gonna bite it off. Uh, Scott kills him after he sings, which again, Bollywood. Uh, if you want to fight <laughs> me, well, uh, you're not the brightest. <laughs> Sex bob -omb wins. Because <laughs> uh, during that fight, we forgot to mention during that fight, the uh, crash yeah, they get the boys, zap they, they, they evaporated. They get murdered, which, which by the way, their drummer is like a 10 year old girl. So yeah. She just gets murdered by a fireball. And they're supposed to come back too. I know. <laughs> yeah, like they, they were supposed to like, I know they have knives pass out in the movie, but originally yeah. um, the whole crowd was supposed to be knocked out, except for Scott's friends because they were all up in the balcony. Yeah. Because oh. Crash and the Band knocks them all out because of whatever song they were playing. Yeah. I love I, backtrack, and I think it's the scene where they're singing the song and Young Neil gets the lyrics messed up. Yeah, everyone's been there. Everyone has tried to like sing along with the song and screwed up a lyric and then corrected themselves. It's really good. Young Neil, who was in Jennifer's Body, go back and watch that episode. Um, so yeah, Sex Bob Om wins. And uh, what you call it? Ramona finally tells him, like, hey, if you date me, you're going to have to defeat my seven, seven evil exes, not boyfriends, exes. exes, even though she does say boyfriends originally in the book. Yes. And uh, I have it in my notes here. I would kill 700 men for one night with Mary Elizabeth Winstead. <laughs> I'd murder them all. You can't kill Obi-Wan. 
He's not Obi Wan. Um, Seinfeld. So when this played in the theater, Johanna was sitting in a couple rows down because um, the Seinfeld. I sat with the cool people. Yes, the Seinfeld music played, and I just saw you like turn around because I was like, <laughs> yeah. I literally was just like. <laughs> uh, because it's like a sitcom and he's like yeah. what's up I got to second base maybe first and a half and there's like music playing and uh, audience cheering uh, Scott changes and he has a problematic Punisher logo on his shirt at least it doesn't have the blue stripe through it oh don't worry that's not the only problematic Punisher logo also, the Punisher shows up. Anyway. <laughs> Starts killing everybody. <laughs> so cancel Scott. Uh, I love uh, the fake posters they made for the Lucas Lee. <laughs> I want the actual posters. You could probably just print them out. Because when the movie came out, they actually like, they, the they post it like high res versions. Mm. And the one was like, action doctor, check your pulse. May 18th or whatever. But the one is like, kiss me, I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> So Lucas Lee is an American actor who's in town filming a movie. Chris Evans. Yeah, and the fucking the action stuff he's doing is so cliche. <laughs> Still an action doctor. Check your pulse. I, I am sad that some of these movies weren't created even as shorts. <laughs> um, so Knives invites Scott over to her parents and mentions her dad. Who is not in this movie? Yeah, he does a bigger part in the books. He does. So, so Scott, what was it originally? He's he's like hunting Scott because Scott breaks up with knives, right? Yes, he like hurt her or whatever it was. So yeah. Oh my god, it's your dad. So yeah, the dad is hunting him. Doesn't he like cut a bus in half? I think so, yeah. Yeah, he like cuts a bus in half. It's pretty It's definitely in that book, so it's somewhere in there. Also, dad's hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, he has a whole thing where he's trying to avenge Scott, but then he realized Scott's an okay guy. Yeah. He's definitely got problems, but he's not like... Uh, Be malicious on purpose. Yes. Um. So yeah, that, it's sad they cut that out, but obviously if you're going to trim stuff out, that's one you can yeah. easily trim. Um, Scott dumps knives. Yeah, she just said that she loves him. Yeah. Her problem, uh, and I love that. <laughs> I love that Scott's on the bus and he's feeling bad, and then he's just thinking about the new girl he's dating, and he's like, "Ah, it's all fine." Is that when the Ramona song plays, or is that when he's sad? I can't remember. When he's sad, okay. the Ramona song plays because he hasn't said it yet. He's about to sing it right now. <clears throat> so Scott, he goes on a date with Ramona uh, while Wallace goes to go see Lucas Lee. Um. And I love that he's like, look, in uh, 60 minutes, if it's not going well, just meet me at the castle. Uh, he makes her some garlic bread. You didn't know that bread makes you fat. I get fat. No, why would I get fat? Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? Uh, yeah, they uh, they don't really mention it in uh, the movie, but he's a really good cook. Yeah. That's why he- like, Yeah, there's that on, whole yeah, thing, yeah. Where he actually like gets a job and he's a mm. uh, line cook and he's really good at it. Yes. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have any job in this one. Nope. They also don't include the landlord. Yeah, uh, what was his name? I, I have that. We had theories. Peter. Yeah, we had theories about the landlord. Me and our our mutual friend. Please stop. It's, 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 uh, it's an alias for protecting his identity. Mm. Uh, <laughs> people say I'm really bad at picking aliases. I don't know why. Uh, I wonder why you're single. <laughs> We had a theory that because it was Edgar Wright, that that was going to be Simon Pegg. Like they would have made him the mm. landlord, but because Edgar Wright was trying to differentiate himself, obviously. Like, I feel like maybe that was put into the books so it could be a part for him, like a cameo for him, but then they ended up not using it. Yeah, whatever. Um, it's not the end of the world. So yeah, the he sings her a song, the Ramona song, which uh, when I was in college, we had that dog who lived in my house, Fiona. Remember her? Mm -hmm. The Chihuahua Pug Mix, mm -hmm. she died like a year or two ago. And we used mm -hmm. to sing this song to her, but change the words to Fiona. <laughs> oh my be like, God. Fiona! And the dog would be like... <laughs> it was always so confused. I the wonder dog, why. The dog is in my movie somewhere. Um, is it on the cover? Nah. Terrible. Bad movie. No. Video's on 
the slide's great. <sighs> Where are we at here? So yeah, they start to talk about uh, his hair. And I realize I need a haircut. I really need a haircut. S send some haircut suggestions. I asked that on Twitter and you guys suggested bad ones. You suggested bad ones. Um, so send me some haircut suggestions. But I love like every time someone mentions the hair, he puts a hat on. He has PTSD. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because the last time he got a haircut was before the day he got broken up with and he's been cutting his own hair ever since. And I love that he, it's the narrators like he is well aware that his last haircut was 400 and something days ago. And then, uh, oh, my God. Uh, he was like saying that, like, it was like a mutual breakup, or whatever. And then it's, it's like, like it, it wasn't. It, wasn't. it, was, brutal. it. it was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, he realizes it isn't going well and he needs an excuse to wear a hat. So they go for a walk. And she's like, are we? doing this so you can wear a hat. Oh my God. Um, and you'll notice throughout the movie, they'll cut to these signs with X's mm -hmm. everywhere to let you know like where we are in the movie. Um, something to take note of. Jessica, look those up. Look up all the X foreshadowing in this. Um, like the X one is X-Men. Yeah, he, has a, he wears an Xavier uh, patch. Scott says he does drugs all the time. Unless she doesn't like them, and in any case, he doesn't do them. <laughs> you know, it's like the opposite. He's like, I don't do drugs. Unless you do, then in case I do all the drugs yeah, all the time. I, <laughs> uh, I love, so they don't know that Lucas Lee, well, he doesn't know that Lucas Lee is the second evil ex. Yeah. And I love when Chris Evans comes out of the trailer. Or the plane. He was supposed to know at this point. Yes. Not in, obviously not in the movie, whatever, but like, um, Wallace was basically doing all the research for him. Yes. On like all these exes and like who they were and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's more fun for the movie. Oh yeah. It's just them, like, like rolling up. Yeah. yeah. No, I do enjoy that more. Uh, see, I love the universal theme is playing. Cause when you don't hear the, the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this fight is pretty awesome. Mm. Uh, the digital transition between Michael Sarah to a stuntman is like almost seamless. Yeah. Like you have to like really look for it, but I thought that was really, really good. Um, and yeah. Like, and I love uh, Lucas Lee, his stunt doubles so, who join him. Yeah. I like him better in the movie. Yeah. Because he's more of a douchebag. He is. Help my cap pop. Like the, uh, the hair cap. Oh. I felt my hair just like flop out of it. <laughs> Anyway, right, I'm continue. taking these off. Hold on. Maybe that's the problem. You're ruining all. Oh. What? Are you fixing it? Yeah, I'm fixing it. Are you putting the goggles back on? I'll put them back on. You got simps right now that are very upset. Oh my god. I like how Lucas Lee is uh, in this in the movie better than how he is in the book because he's actually nicer in the book. Like he even mm. says to Scott at one point, whatever, after they like started fighting, like, oh, maybe we should take a break. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but then in this, whatever, he's just like a full on douchebag. Oh no, they play up his asshole. It's so funny. It's really good. Well, I don't think he's a piece of shit. I mean, he's just very famous. He's a piece of shit. Look, when you when you're as famous as me one day, oh my god, you you'll know what it's like. But until then, okay, Tony, relax. Um, yeah. So Scott, I like after this long exaggerated fight scene where he's fighting all the stunt doubles, some that don't look anything like him. Uh, Scott tricks him into killing himself with the skateboard trick. Yeah. And he's like, these rails are garbage. I'm not grinding down there. He's like, there's girls watching. <laughs> That's that does it for him. He uh was it he he's supposed to get a like after Lucas Lee dies, obviously he gets the money, but he's supposed to get a mithril skateboard too. Yes. But then Scott's like, I, I think he says something like I don't even skate or something like that, <laughs> and then it just goes away. <laughs> uh but he does get uh two thousand points. Yep. Two thousand coins. Yeah, every time he beats a guy, he gets coins. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, kind of Ramona like a Sonic thing. Yeah, Ramona Bales. Uh, and he's very sad the next day. Uh, everything sucks infinity. So if you look on the cabinet, the uh, refrigerator, he has the refrigerator magnets and he puts sucks, S U X. Then he grabs the eight and turns it sideways and brings it over, and that's the infinity logo. So it's like everything sucks. Um, Scott thinks the L word is lesbian. Yeah. Or lesbians. Time to break out the L word. Lesbian? The other L word. <laughs> Lesbians? Lesbians? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's love, Scott. I'm not trying to trick you. Uh, but Wallace wants to kick him out, uh, and he gets a call from Envy Adams. Womp, womp, womp. More like, woke, woke, woke. I am sad that they changed her into a typical blonde instead of having the red hair. She's supposed to have red hair. Hey, why did they do blonde? I don't know. Hmm. 
Is she blonde in the book at any point? No. Mm. Always a redhead. Uh, hmm. Maybe it's a Brie Larson thing. It could just be because they already had a redhead in the movie and they had a multicolored hair one. I don't think they really had a definitive blonde in the movie. Makes sense. Meh. Hmm. Because then it's like, does he have a thing for redheads? And... Meh. Hmm. What are you and Crystal doing single white female? I think they remade that as single black female. I saw a poster for that. And oh. I don't know if it's like someone just made a joke thing or if that's real. But I'm like, shit, I gotta watch that movie now because I like single white female. Um, <laughs> I love when Knives shows up the next day and Scott jumps out the window. Oh yeah. I love that. Is Scott here? No, he just left. <laughs> Is Scott here? Uh, you know what? He just left. Uh, he, he like opens the door all the way and then he like closes it because Scott's standing right there and she's like, "Is Scott here?" And he's like, "No." <laughs> and then we uh, get foreshadowing to her. Her. What was her name? May Whitman. It's an arrested, Katara from it's, Avatar. It's a Arrested Development joke. The whole joke is the family can't remember that character's names because she's so bland. And look, her name's Anne, oh but they God. always go like her. And then they'll be like, yes, bland. <laughs> like, I mean, Anne, sorry. Oh my God. I love Mae Whitman. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention too, um, during the Matthew Patel fight or whatever, Scott's friends were supposed to help too. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah. they don't. They're just kind of there. Makes sense. The Scott's friends are also reduced because uh, what's the one guy, Steven? The singer. Steven Singer? <laughs> That's Steven Singer. Is the, the band the guy? Steven the, Stills? Yes. Yeah. There, there's like a uh, part in the book where he turns gay. Yeah, he realizes he, he's gay. he comes out as gay. Yeah, because he, he starts hanging out with that one guy. Who's yeah, also and I love, it was one of my favorite things in the book where uh, like Scott is. Joseph un, was the guy. Yeah, got, Scott is unaware. And he's like, when that happened? And he goes like, I think in volume four, like he calls yeah, back like, yeah, to the earlier He's like, book. oh, I like, I told everybody, but you seem busy with other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, this happened for a while. Uh, I also but that's to mention, all uh, with um, uh, Lucas Lee, uh, at one point, whatever, he was like, I can just pretend that, like, you beat me up, Scott, if you just, you know, hey, I think he says, like, pay me or something like that. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Yeah. So, yeah, he uh, fights Mae Whitman for a little bit, uh, but he tells her, like, he doesn't want to fight right now. So she, she pieces out and yep. she's a ninja. Uh,. Yes, we see Julie. I love this whole thing where you think he's going to talk to his sister. Then he walks in, but it's actually Julie and his sister's already Yeah, left. she's like, sorry, I got to go. <laughs> and I love Julie being censored with the... Brrr. He's like, how are you doing that with your mouth? Never mind. What the yeah. <laughs> uh, Ramona apologizes to Scott and Envy shows up in town. Womp womp. She looks like the cardboard cut out, but then she starts moving. Yes, woke. Uh, she is like such a bitch in this. Like she just it, purposely wants to ruin his life. Yeah, like and Ramona, I guess, because I guess she's mad that her current boyfriend is in this league of evil exes. Yeah, because she's known him for like forever. Yeah, like she's known him since they were like kids or whatever. And apparently they were always a thing. But then he had to move away, and then did the vegan camp. And yeah. talk about envy, not uh, Ramona. Yes. Oh, I love when she's like, "Your hair shaggy," and it just cuts. He's already wearing the hat. Like just in a cut, it just shows up. Like, oh, that's fucking funny um so yeah she uh invites him to their show and he says he doesn't want to go uh we hear that envy cheated on scott with todd and then ramona mentions she dated a todd yep have you noticed anything about the moon in this movie it's supposed to have two holes yeah but it only has one yeah. in the movie makes sense but i love that that was it, I, I didn't catch that the first yeah, the, time the whole spoilers uh he's cheating on envy with the drummer yes i have a bionic that. arm yes i have that in here yeah and uh, she's the one who's supposed to punch knives yeah they can I, I and i understand combining the characters it's such a big plot point for envy though and like envy's supposed to get redemption at the end and they yeah, kind of have her just as a one-faced bitch. A lot, a lot of the envy stuff is it sucks. severely condensed. I don't think it sucks. It sucks. It's just for the purpose. Envy stuff was fun. For the purpose of it, like a two-hour, fifteen-minute movie, I understand. Um, if they were sucks. trying to make multiple movies, maybe, but sucks. I don't think you can squeeze out seven movies in the series. Sucks. Uh, where are we at here? Gay orgies are happening in Scott's apartment. <laughs> because Wallace, his boyfriend, and his sister, the Scott's sister's boyfriend, are all there. 
Uh, and I like they're like, and you didn't have sex with her? Are yeah, you what was gay? Because uh, he wakes up <laughs> yeah. after like a nightmare or something like that. Yeah. He, and he wakes up and it's just like, what, oh, like what's happening or whatever? And he's like, oh, what's happening, other Scott? And then, <laughs> then the other one wakes up. <laughs> yeah. And then um, with this band, he finds out that they are going to open up for his ex, Clash of Demon Head. That's, that's a video game, right? I think so. I, I don't remember. I wouldn't know. And I refuse to know. Um, but I like that Knives is spying on them. From the window? <laughs> like, we're gonna have, like, crazy stalkers, and then she's just there. And then I love, uh, her whole thing where... Well, first she cut her hair to kind of look like Ramona a little bit. Uh, and now she's dyeing her hair. <laughs> yeah, she does it red in the book, but then blue in the movie to match Ramona, because she wants to yeah. be like Ramona's, because... Scott likes Ramona, so she wants to be more like Ramona. So Scott will want her. Yeah, and I love her friend is just like, I don't know what you're saying. When she's like screaming and whatnot. She's rinsing the dye out of her hair. Yeah, and then she does the whole tactic. And this people have tried this on me where they like try to date the guy's friend to get them jealous. I don't think that's ever worked. People tried it on me and it's just like, well, I, I feel bad for you now, dude. Like there was a oh my reason. Oh, God. <laughs> No, the one, the one that tried to fight you. She started like hooking up with like a bunch of my friends. I'm like, you mad at me? I'm like, I'm like, no, but like there was a reason I dumped her. You should really look out. <laughs> um, so Knives is at the uh, show and Ramona's freaked out about her. And she's like, how do you know her again? And I love the little wheel of excuses. And it's between I have to pee. And, uh, <laughs> I got to uh, pee on her. <laughs> yeah, and uh, who her or I got to pee. And he's like, I got to pee on her. <laughs> Uh, Clash of Demon Head sings Black Sheep. By Metric. By Metric. Um, wasn't that a thing? Like, this wasn't officially released until recently. Like, you weren't able to, like, buy this Yeah, song. the Brie Larson one. I mean, it existed on, like, YouTube. There was, like, not a video. Not a full version. Not a full version. Not a full version. I thought version. there was a nope, full version. Not a full version. I remember listening to a full version. Maybe someone, like, ripped it or something from something. Yeah. I don't know. There was but no official release real version because now it's on like every streaming service and shit now yes so uh brandon ralph is there superman oh uh, i have a superman cut out in the uh, games team room uh -huh. god damn it yeah so brandon ralph is there and he also has a problematic punisher skull uh canceled todd uh todd uh, ba afterwards they're in the back room knives is freaking out because she's obsessed with envy and she realizes scott ha used to date her she turns into an emoji at one point, yeah. which is terrifying. Uh, but she keeps interrupting their conversation and eventually Envy gets fed up and Todd just punches the highlights out of her hair. <laughs> I love the fucking scene. <laughs> he punched the highlights out of her hair. Ugh. He punched the highlights out of her hair. He punched the highlights out of her hair. I love the you're incorrigible. And he's like, I don't, I don't know, know the meaning of the, the world. It's like, he really doesn't. Um, so yeah, this scene's weird. Scott goes to fight her, but then stop me if you heard this one before, but Brandon Routh has superpowers. But as Whoa. this is happening, like the drummer disappears. And that was apparently to get her out of the scene, but then she's back like a second later. So I don't know why she disappeared from that one scene. Um, yeah, and then Scott's like, have you dumped everyone you've ever been with? Because <laughs> apparently that's like Ramona's yeah. thing. Uh, and then she also tells a backstory about him too. Yes, he went to vegan academy. And he for punched he the hole in the moon for her. Yes, because when you're vegan, you get superpowers. Because yeah, being vegan just means you're better than everyone else. He was supposed to have also punched another uh, hole. Yeah. In the moon for envy, and that right. was supposed to be a huge plot thing. And they find out that they did it for yeah. yeah. Uh, but again, you're simplifying it. You're cutting it down. I understand. I mean, that's fine. Yes. Just, I really wish MD was in this more. Yeah. What are you gonna do? I like that whole storyline, but whatever. So they have a base battle, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but the vegan police show up last yeah. minute. Because <laughs> and Scott one of them, tricks him into drinking half and half. Yes. And one of them is Thomas Jane, the Punisher. Yep. But he's not wearing a logo, so he's good. Um... I actually don't care about the Punisher logo. I don't care. Uh, yeah, so they they have his history of like what he used to eat. I yeah. remember in the comic, he's like bragging with the the, the drummer girl how he doesn't yeah. care. Yeah, and how they like, do whatever because like he said he was gonna order gelato when he was at the one restaurant with yeah. uh, her and Envy, and then um, 
She's like, oh, like, that's like a, like a fruit thing, right? And he's like, yeah. And then she walks away because Envy's like dumb. Yeah. And um, actually, that was supposed to be the part where um, uh, I think Lynette was her name. Mm. Yeah, Lynette, the uh, drummer. Uh, she's supposed to say you are incorrigible. Oh, right. That was supposed to be their line, which is fine. I don't care. Mm. But right. yeah, uh, he... Uh, I think he was also bragging in the comic too, whatever, about how he ate the chicken parm too. Yeah. But in this, whatever, he's just like the the, the police are reading yeah, his prior reading offenses. Off. They're like, you had some gelato. Like, gelato was like, vegan. He's like, he's like, and then he had chicken parmesan. Chicken isn't vegan. Yeah, but at least like the gelato, whatever. He's just like, what? And he's like, it's milk and eggs, bitch. <laughs> so they stop me if you heard this one before. But Brandon Routh loses his powers because of a green his energy. Hair goes flat. <laughs> So it's basically kryptonite. <laughs> I love the vegan police in the background after they do it. They're like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Scott, Scott, Scott kills him because one, you were a vegan. Now you will be gone. But yeah, vegan. It's like this slow motion thing. And they're just like, yeah. <laughs> <Woo."> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Envy's sad. Yeah. And she's like, you just hit my boyfriend. Headbutt. So you headbutted my boyfriend, he exploded. He's so like, hard he burst. <laughs> you kicked my heart in the ass, so now we're even. Natalie. Um, he, uh, you know, obviously was like super sassy with her. Like, oh yeah, you like broke my heart, whatever. But like, there was supposed to be the whole thing where like, it was kind of a mutual breakup, whatever, because he treated her like shit too. You say a mutual? I did. I'm trying to, <laughs> it's mutual. No, no, no. I get shit on for words that end in A-W getting made fun of all the mutual. time. Mutual. You literally just said mutual. I swear. <laughs> I'm just picturing, I'm picturing. Mutual. Just, I'm just picturing two cows just being like, I don't think it's going to work, Bessie. Okay. <laughs> it's not mutual. This anyway. Is a mutual but breakup. yeah, I, I'm, I'm very sad because it was, this was kind of supposed to allude that Scott is not a good person. Yeah. Like, he also sucked. Like, this was supposed to, like, force it into it. And well, the whole thing is, like, there are no real good or bad guys. Everyone's got their pros and cons. Except for Knives. I'd say Knives is, like, a good person. Well, I mean, she's a little... Stacy. <laughs> Stacy sucks. Nah, Stacy's great. She's mean. <laughs> Stacy's great. But and Knives has her own issues, too. Like, getting way too obsessed with people and not taking things slowly. I blame the older man that was grooming her. Or There's that too. But also she uses young Neil, which is wrong, right? I mean, he was fine with it. <laughs> <sighs> so anyway, um, yeah, Scott calls her Natalie. She's like, no one's ever called me that before. They leave. Uh, Envy, no one so, calls yeah. me that anymore. Yes. So Envy's story is Done. pretty much reduced, but they incorporate some stuff into the next fight. It, yeah. When he fights, uh, and in the very uh, last battle too, technically. A little bit, yeah. So he, uh, what's it called? They're at the bar. I think this is where we first see Nega Scott, right? He goes to like he goes to the bathroom, and we see him in the mirror for like a second. I think, yeah, I think so. Yes. Um. Apparently, when I listen to the commentary, apparently, like Scott, because he does ask her, he's like, "You ever dated anyone who wasn't an ass?" They were gonna be like, apparently, there was gonna be a character named Philip. And she's like, well, there was this one guy, Philip, and we're just going to cut to a guy just being like, hi. <laughs> it's oh just like, like, that's the one ex-boyfriend where it was like a mutual thing. But then they wanted to be like, ah, oh, then that would kind of defeat the purpose. Because I think in the book she mentions having one boyfriend who was okay. She does. Yeah. yeah. But thematically, they're like, no, it's better if like for this. Yeah. Um, That would have been funny to see. But yes, uh, Roxy. Roxy shows up. Uh, <laughs> they have a fight, her and Ramona. Mm-hmm. This is where we get Ramona's big hammer that comes out of her purse, her subspace purse. Not explained. Um, they duke it out. And then uh, what yeah, is it? The, the, this fight was supposed to, like this whole thing was supposed to be her and Envy. Yes. Yes. Uh, that obviously didn't happen. Yes. And also I, the previous fight with Todd, that was supposed to go on longer and be this whole like long ass thing. And they were supposed to go some like weird ass thrift store too together to like see who can get through it the fastest. And yeah. Because remember each... Mess. Each book is him fighting an ex. Yeah. Like the whole book. Well, not like the whole book is not one long fight, but like it's built around whatever the ex is that time. So anyway. So yeah, uh, according to league rules, only Scott can defeat Roxy. So like they literally, Ramona is puppeteering him. Yeah. Uh, apparently this is like a tribute to like kind of action scenes that you would see in like Jackie Chan movies, mm. how wacky they are. 
Uh, but I thought that was pretty great. And then she's about to kill Scott. And Ramona tells her to touch the spot behind her knee, which was Envy's thing. That was Envy's thing. How does he beat her in the book again? Um, Because uh, she's, yeah, she's ex number four. four. Yeah. Hold on. I think it's closer to the front. Because this is another one where they're like, they didn't continue fighting all the way through. Like a lot oh, of I love, I love that there's like little mini comics for Como. <laughs> yeah, there... There's a lot of the X's that like get some more um, airtime mm -hmm. in the books or whatever. Like you get to actually know them more instead of just being like two faced. Just yeah. Oh, he cuts her in half, That's and she it. turns into rabbits. That's it. That's how she does it. Um, yeah. So she he touches the back of her. And she orgasms. And to she death. orgasms to death. I guess. Can't relate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. So now. So now Scott gets drunk <laughs> and he's being a real dick. Yeah. Uh, although not really. I mean, if he's in a shitty situation, I think he gets a free pass. Like, come on. He didn't uh, have to do it. He didn't have to date her. That's true. But he's also like misreading some stuff. He thinks she's going to end it, but not really. Um, but yeah, he's like, maybe you can give me a list of all your ex-boyfriends. And then she tells him he's another evil ex waiting to happen. But she conveniently does give him a list. So next on his uh, fighting list is the Katianagas twins. Kanagi. Kanagi. Why is there an S there? I don't know. You probably typed it wrong. Katianagi twins. Now these are, as far as I can tell, the most different than the books. Yeah. Like in the movie, they don't talk at all because they cannot speak English. Yes. So books, they actually bounce around a few times, whatever, even go to a party that they're at yeah. and actually talk. So uh, there's a reason for the change and it it's related to like what was going on at the time. The twins make robots. Yep. And he fights them. When the movie was coming out, there were a lot of robot movies. The Transformer movies, uh, shit like Real Steel was on the way. Oh God. There was a bunch of robot stuff. And I remember Edgar Wright was like, we don't want to, and Iron Man is out. So they're like, we didn't want to like kind of get grouped in with a bunch of robot stuff. Mm -hmm. So they decided to take on this like completely drastic change. But I love they incorporated the two, the double dragons mm -hmm. there. Yeah. They just have what the, they're DJs. Yes. So yeah, the whole thing, like, yeah, they're, they're now part of the battle of the bands. Part of the battle of the bands, uh, it's an amp versus amp uh, thing. So they have to play both at the same time and yeah. they have a million goddamn amps. Uh, they're dressed like Ken and Ryu. They're wearing like yeah. the red and white, really which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and basically they have like magical powers. Yeah. They make double dragons yeah. come out of their amps and attack uh, Sex Bob-omb. Bob -omb. Uh, Sex but Bob-omb gets the Yeti. Yeah, Scott summons the power of the Yeti. So it's just a Yeti fighting the two dragons, which I thought was pretty awesome, which I guess they're Japanese, right? So it was just like a throwback to like Toho stuff, just giant monsters yeah. fighting. Um, and it is in this scene we finally see Jason Schwartzman as Gideon, yep. who is G-Man. As you you do it in the book too, after he uh, defeats them, um, but he's like kind of just like in the background. Well, isn't he like seen through the cat or something, or the cat is him? No. What was the Gideon? Ca oh, she just named the cat Gideon, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. No, he technically can see everything because of. Yeah, there's like the glow or the, something. Yeah, the glow. So Not the glow from The Last Dragon, that episode you guys didn't watch. Please it, watch The Last it's Dragon. It's supposed to be more, uh, I can't find it. But um, it's tied it, into it's, the, it's subspace. the subspace stuff. Yeah. yeah. Which again, a lot of it was eliminated. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Scott gets an extra life for beating the exes. Yeah, was it? He was supposed to get it when he originally beat, I think it was like odd. Yeah. Uh, and I love the little graphic for the one up. Is it just the comic book phase? It's from the game. Oh yeah, they're right. The, the game, game came out played, after. Have you ever played the game? I played it briefly when it came okay. out initially. My editor for Mummy Cop, he had it on his uh, PlayStation. Okay. And I would play it while he was editing Mummy Cop yeah. in his house. I uh, I ordered the uh, giant KO edition thing where mm. like. Um, it has like a stage that you can unfold and it like lights up and stuff, whatever. No. So, I still we should got play it. the game. I have the game. We should play it. I need to set up my PlayStation 4. I still have to wait for my physical copy to come because limited run is being super slow. It's almost <sighs> like everything I get from Scott Pilgrim's cursed. Yeah. Yeah. Scott uses the wrong L word. He uses I'm lesbians, lesbians with you. 
Uh, she dumps him for Gideon, but Gideon signs the sex bombs to his label. And I love that they're so, I love he's like, we won't sell out. And they're just like, silent out. Yeah. And they're like, what are you going to do without a bass player? I do like this twist whatever since they cut out Envy, but like I'm still yeah. sad because Envy's supposed to be the band playing at the end. Yeah. And also like Ramona's supposed to just disappear and not go back with um, Gideon. She's yes. supposed to just go to her dad's place because it's the middle of nowhere. And keep in mind around this time is where they didn't really have a book. And this is like of- this, the, the sixth book came out what in like right before the movie came out, I think. I think so here. It's, I'm pretty sure if uh, five was 2009. 2000, July 2010. Yeah. Wait, when did the movie come out? It came out like August 2010, I think. August, it was, was definitely right, in the summer. Yeah, it's right when I moved back. In, I moved into my studio apartment. So yeah, the book, the last book came That's out. That's really funny. Yeah, right before the movie came out. So yeah, and they, again, they were in contact, but like Brian Lee O'Malley didn't want to be tied down to whatever the movie was doing. Yeah. Um, but he does borrow some stuff. This whole ending is just very, very, very different. But this is also the part of the movie, like once she goes back with Gideon, this is where I'm kind of like not as into the movie. Oh, really? I could, yeah, I could kind of feel some stuff's lacking. Is it because it's not like it is in the book? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't uh, know. I just like, I, I kept feeling like something was missing. No. Um, also, like the chip on the back of her neck and stuff. That was weird. Yeah, because they didn't do the subspace yeah. glow thing. Do we mention Neil replaces Scott? No. <laughs> and they set that up because throughout the film, it's like, Scott, uh, Neil could play my part. Neil could play my part. And then when it's like, who are you going to get to replace your bass player? And it's like, Neil's like, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, I like that Gideon's logo is sevens turned sideways. Yep. Uh, and I like that Gideon apologized, like, hey, about that whole league thing. I was in a dark place. <laughs> um, but, and everything would be fine, except Gideon has to call Scott to mock him. Because he's an asshole. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I think, oh yeah, O'Malley liked the dress Ramona was wearing, so he incorporated it into the book. That was like one of the things they took here. Um... Wallace, uh, he basically tells Scott, it's like, hey, kick his ass. Yeah. After he's like, it's probably because he's just better than you. He's, he completely switches. He's like, I changed my mind. Kick his ass. Uh, so Scott gets ready. He suits up. He ties his shoe very slowly, which got a big laugh out of me. Where it's like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, and he runs into the, um, what you call it? The, the cathedral, the, uh, the club, basically. Oh my God. What was the club? I know Gideon refers to it as a cathedral, um, but I love the what's the pass theater. Yes, I love it. He's just like, what's the password? Whatever. <laughs> <All right. laughs> okay, you can go. <laughs> and then when he gets to the last one, he's just like, oh. and he's like, all right, you're good. <laughs> yeah. So Scott shows up and he professes his love for Ramona and he earns the power of love sword, which, which is from an earlier book. Yeah. That's where he, he fights Roxy, right? Yes, he got yeah. it from Roxy. Yes. Uh, so yeah, he fights Gideon, but his sword gets damaged. Um, Knives also shows up to kill Ramona. Oh, he fights some henchmen and they all turn into coins. Yeah. And when it zooms out, the coins are in the shape of people. I thought that was funny. Knives comes up to kill Ramona for breaking Which Scott's heart. that was heart. supposed to happen in a previous book too. Yes. It was supposed to be just them two, whatever, in a library. Yes. Because uh, Ramona was hanging out with Stacy. Right. And they, again... Yeah. Makes total sense yeah, why they would do fine. it. They finally find out that Scott was dating both of them at the same time. They're not thrilled about it. I love when he's like, she was like, you cheated on me with knives. He's like, no, no, I cheated on knives with you. And it's like, that's not much better. Yeah, you weren't wronged. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't wronged. Uh, Gideon kills him. But you can't cheat death. When he is originally stabbed in the book, uh, 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 what a- in the book. There you go. In the book. Jesus Christ. There's actually blood. Oh no. Here it is. Yeah, he gets full on stabbed. Well, I mean, it's PG thirteen movie. He, he did. He dies. Um. Like it even cuts to white. Yes. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so he's uh very very sad. He's dying. Ramona visits him in his little dream world before he dies. Yep. And she's like, yeah, Gideon was the one boyfriend who ignored me. So I left. 
Uh, then he became obsessed with me for leaving him. I've heard of guys like that. I'm aware of them. It's like, I need to get back with her. And it's like, dude, you, you didn't really care about her that much. And they're like, I love her, man. I'm like, no, you don't. Uh, that's also a Seinfeld thing. When George is like, I loved her, Jerry. And Jerry's like, no, oh you God. didn't. <laughs> I think it's the same where George is like, she's the only woman I never lied to. And then he pauses. He goes, that's not true. <laughs> anyway, um, if you have your bingo card, Tony mentioned Seinfeld. Oh, God. Dying. Oh, it's not plugged in. So it's dying. My God. <sighs> uh, so yeah, she's telling him the whole backstory. She has a computer chip that he uses to control her. Yeah. And I love it. He's like, he literally has a way inside my head. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's like, I really fall for you. And she's like, you shouldn't be fighting for me. And this is when he learns. He's like, oh yeah, I got to do this for myself. Because I have to respect myself. He gets the power of self-respect. Yes, he uh, gets his one up. He restarts. He kicks more ass. He shows up. Uh, and yeah, he admits all his faults. He's like, Kim, I was bad to you. You guys are way better than without me. I did this wrong. I did that wrong. And then, yes, power of self-respect. Yeah. In uh, the book, he, um, what's it? He admits and understands that uh, he's no better than Gideon. Yes. In terms of like relationships and stuff, uh, shit or whatever. But uh, instead of getting uh, power of self-respect, he gets the power of understanding. Right. Which, yeah. I got that power too. The one day when I, I found me. I bet you do. I've gotten the power of love, the power of respect, the power of understanding. I have all, I have all three swords and I use them to fight. All three of them. I hold all three of them at the same time while I, I fight. I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, I also love when he, um, so when he goes into the club the first time, uh, Como's there and he's just like, he's like, yeah, the first album uh, isn't as good as the first yeah. album. But then the second time when he walks in, he goes, the comic book is way better than yeah. the movie, <laughs> which I thought was pretty fucking funny because he knew those guys were going to be, well, no one was in the theaters. No one saw the movie besides us, but you knew there were going to be people be like, nah, in the book, it's so much better. Um... So yeah, uh, he like fights Gideon and Gideon swallows gum and does the gum myth. It's going to be in my digestive system mm -hmm. for seven years. That's a yeah, myth. He's supposed to get his weapon from the back of Envy's dress. Because remember, it was supposed right. to be the Envy concert instead of, um, it was supposed to be her solo concert instead of having uh, right. Sex Bomb Bomb, which did they change their name? I think they maybe have changed their name. I don't know. You just I read can't, it. I can't remember. Um, no, I mean like in the movie. No, in the movie, they Are were... Are they still Sex bob -omb? They're Sex bob -omb. Okay. Gideon just keeps calling them the d uh, different thing each okay. time. Because uh, yeah. he can't remember their names. But yeah, uh, there was supposed to be this whole thing with like Envy or whatever, and I'm sad. Mm. Um, Ramona's computer chip uh, gets deactivated too at this point. I love yeah. Gideon's pixel sword. Yeah. Although it's... Also, they're supposed to show that he has like other X's like in like this cryo chamber thing. That's right. That they get, so they get, weird. They get rid of that too. Um... Let me see. Scott's second sword breaks. Uh, and Ramona, he thinks Gideon still thinks I do like uh, earlier in the film uh, because she's under his control. They have that song under my thumb playing. Yeah. My gun's pretty funny. Uh, he's like, you're my girl. And she's like, let's both be girls. She kicks him right in the balls. That was an enemy line. She yeah. does have to die. I think they combine. I'm mad. But then he beats Gideon hits her and the words come up. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Let me get some nice cleavage. He stabs her in the book. Yeah. We get some nice cleavage from Ramona. Um, it's very important. Uh, Knives and Scott, they team up and it mimics uh, the arcade game from yep. the beginning where they're this fighting. This was really cute. I, yeah. I like this a lot. Because they're working together uh, and they they beat up, uh, which is face Gideon. Gideon dies, explodes. There's coins raining from the heavens. Wow. Uh, but there's one more person he has to fight. Nega Scott. That's right. The but he Nega Scott. Do it. He just... No, they, like it cuts and it's just like, all right, man, we'll hang out. We're gonna do brunch yeah. later. We have a lot in common. <laughs> and I, I am kind of disappointed in that whole thing. Like this was supposed to happen prior, not after Gideon. Yes. It was supposed to happen like a while ago, but this is supposed to pretty much like because throughout the whole book, well, all the books, whatever, um, Scott has a bad time remembering things. Mm. And it's because Gideon was messing with his memories. Yes. Due to Ramona using his head. 
Yes. As like the subspace stuff. And um, whatchamacallit, uh, he was remembering things incorrectly, like uh, the breakup between him and Envy mm. or the breakup with him and Kim. Because um, with the Kim thing, uh, he kind of did screw her over. He just kind of left to go to Toronto. He didn't tell her that he was moving. Mm. He told someone else who told her. Yeah. So Scott kind of sucked. He's <laughs> a young guy. You make mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes when hey, I was a young I guy. Hey, I my... Uh, what? Like, like he, Scott, like, hey, I'm, I'm fighting to date this one girl. Oh, you said I fought. Yeah, well, I'm I thought you be- said thought. I'm like, who the no. fuck's a thought? I mean, you can be a thought. <laughs> Um, anyway. Yeah, he, like, fought... It was uh, Kim's ex or kind of boyfriend or whatever it was. Who looked kind of like Gideon, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, uh, then you know, he starts dating Kim, goes through this whole thing where, like, they're super cute, and it kind of alluded that they lost their virginity to each other, too. And then he just... Oh, God! Oh, no! My goggles. Who are you? You just look like you're angry on the internet. <laughs> Who could I am you? angry on the internet. <laughs> Who could you possibly be? Oh, you're Ramona Flowers. Okay. Whatever, I'm going to leave him like this. So, yeah, Scott has a lot of uh, learning he has to do and whatnot. So, this ending, Knives, and it's funny, I retweeted someone who was like, can we all admit that Knives was too good for Scott? I'm like, that's literally her character. I think the movie spells that out for you several times. They do. I believe so. You're too good for him. Run. I'm too cool for you anyway. Um, yeah, Knives realizes she's too sc- cool for Scott. And, uh... Continue. Ha- you're having a rough time there, aren't you? <laughs> Scott, uh, <laughs> leaves with Ramona. They originally were gonna have him end up with Knives. Yes, so they shot two endings. And the idea, the thought behind it was... They knew the book he was gonna end up with Ramona. Yeah. They're like, well, with our movie, maybe we'll have a different ending where he ends up with knives. Cause this happens in a lot of movies where they're like, what's the big one? Was it uh 16 candles or pretty in pink? The one where she should have ended up with the friend. I think it was friend. pretty in pink. Yeah. Everyone says she should have ended up with the friend and they switched it to like the hot guy. I think the studio demanded it mm. and I get it for that movie, but not every movie needs that ending. Like, and for, like, I think I saw, I think I wrote it down. It didn't go well with test audiences because they were also no. like, and also no. the, the way they shot it. Have you ever seen The Graduate with Dustin Hoffman? Yes. Okay, the famous ending of that where he interrupts the wedding and they run away together on the bus, but then mm-hmm. the camera lingers a little too long and you can see they're starting to have second thoughts. They kind of did that with this where they're playing and while the camera, while the video game says continue, you kind of see they're just kind of staring at each other like, uh-oh. Oh. I think I made the wrong thing. So people were like, let's not end it on such a downer. Um, so then they reshot it again for him to leave with Ramona, which mm-hmm. makes sense. Like, everyone's like, oh, you shouldn't be with her. Like, they're not going to work together. And like, that's not the point. The point is he was scared to actually date. And he was like trying to take the easy way out of everything, just yep. dating like a high schooler and whatnot. And also her, her whole thing is like, oh, I don't actually work at relationships. I just run away into another relationship. Yep. So yes, they're right for each other right now. Probably not long-term. But it's like, like even in the end of the where is it the sex book whatever they even say like it's super cute like it's just like the very end it's just like so so and it's just like so we try again yeah and that like that's it there's no it's not showing it's a happy ending it's just showing that they're trying again to see if this could yeah be people potentially like a thing. people get like real mad at this and I'm like no I mean that makes sense he did all that fighting for her and then he realized it was really for himself to like yep. prove himself and he's got to like. Be a better person. He's maturing. They both need to mature and they're going to help each other uh, instead of running away to another guy yep. or just finding another girl to work. And also he was just or trying to coasting. Yeah. He was just basically trying to replace his ex-girlfriend. He wasn't yeah. trying to really get a new girlfriend. Um, he gets closure from Envy in this too, whatever. Yes. Yes. And I, I think it's a really good ending. I mm-hmm. love the whole like continue at the end. Yeah. What? It fits with how this ends, too. Yes, and it's a good time. I really, really love this movie. I really enjoy it. I have to say one thing, though. Yeah? They never had the beach part. They didn't. That's, um, in one of them, it's, like, color. Like, one of the only... Well, these books are all in color now, right? Didn't they make a color Yeah, they print? have color ones now. Yeah, the beginning of four, they yeah. do a whole thing with the Sonic. <laughs> yeah, so 
I, you were reminding you know me. No, we never get. What? Pisses me off. We never get drunk knives and drunk Kim making out. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so uh, sad. Because <laughs> that's the whole thing. Uh, throughout the book, it's like a year. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this even is like, like kind of several weeks. And I remember this is, you've probably seen like a meme of this, but like Scott, like when things are going bad with him and Ramona and knives is like, yeah, I'm like 18 now or whatever. He's like, we should yeah. have casual sex. And she's like, Scott, that's is not. That the, is that the sixth one? Yeah. He's like, we and you should have sex. We should have casual sex. He's like, Scott, that's not. You're not you're not progressing. You're you're just finding another easy way out. <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I love that that's a meme now, though. So that happened. He does the same thing with Envy too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh it's a fun movie. It's a, become a yeah. little bit of a cult hit. I wish it would have done better at the time. But it found a little bit of an audience. Yeah. Lost a lot of money. Found a little bit of the audience. Uh Edgar Wright definitely didn't hurt his career. He's still doing a lot of stuff. I did Baby Driver. I still haven't seen Last Night in Soho. Neither have I. I, have I to thought see, you did I, see it. Mm -mm, I want to see it really bad. I, I've seen I, clips and stuff. I swore you told me on the show you saw it. I must. Did have, I? I don't maybe know. I was thinking of someone else. Um, but yeah, yeah, I really, really like it. It's a, uh, it's a great Valentine's Day movie. You know, cuddle up with the uh, person you love, <laughs> and you can watch. You can cuddle your. Self over there. Me and Meatball, we're gonna cuddle. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna watch Scott Pilgrim, both My Bloody Valentines. <laughs> I feel like that's a really good one. I saw My Bloody Valentine, uh, the 3D one. Yeah. On Valentine's Day one year with a date. Valentine's Day Massacre. I'm pretty sure that's a mob movie, but I'm gonna watch that. Valentine, that horrible slasher oh film. Right. I'm gonna watch that. <laughs> I'll probably watch The Room. That's one of my favorite Valentine's oh Day movies. God. It's the greatest love story ever told, I think. Sure. <laughs> so, yes, happy Valentine's Day. And uh, yeah. if you hate your significant other, make sure you watch this Valentine's Day night with them. Force them to watch this. Oh, my God. And uh, if you're going to propose on Valentine's Day. Uh, Don't. Lame. How cliche. If you're going to break up on Valentine's That's Day. That's funny. <laughs> have fun. Uh, let us know how it goes. If you're sad and lonely on Valentine's Day, send a picture of you watching this episode going, I'm sad and lonely. Subscribe to Hack the Movie. Oh my God. <laughs> and uh, hopefully next year will be better. Mm. I'm going to do the, I'm gonna do a thing where I pretend I don't even like Valentine's Day. It's lame. It's a holiday made by greeting card companies. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I was going to wear shoelaces around my neck because Ramona actually wears uh, the shoelace of her dead brother. Right. But I didn't want to wear a dirty shoelace, so I just put this choker on, and it's really annoying and really tight. Well, what are you going to do? Anyway. Whine about it. Subscribe to Hack the Movies. Pledge to us on Patreon. Uh, Download podcasts wherever podcasts are at those those cranberry those normal cranberry oh juices really hit me god they hit me hard early on and now i'm like coming down from it where i'm like Ugh, i'm very tired now uh and i'm glad we finally got to review this aren't you yeah i'm so glad we got to talk about scott pilgrim two people who read the books i should have reread them beforehand but i have okay read them. i got to interrupt every time to be like well and i'm off now you finally do it with the voice you have to do it like that every time <laughs> I brought I, my DVD because I didn't have a Blu-ray player because I was poor, unlike you who had like a freaking like whole setup with everything else. Piece of I shit. I had the DVD and then I got the Blu-ray and then I Piece gave the DVD shit. to Piece Anthony. Piece of shiitake. Okay. Uh, yeah, so follow all of the things. Check out our other uh, podcasts on our network. Um, they're great. Peg Warmers is great. Mouthfuls. Mouthfuls. Talk about games. I love. Watch them all the time. And yes, uh, we will see you all later. Happy Valentine's Happy Day. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm sad. I'm not. I have so many things I want to talk about. I'm like going to get off track here. This is the case of a game that was far more popular in Japan than it was in the United States. They never <laughs> went to Mordor. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs>
but there's real detail. There's like wiring underneath. You know, they're, they're one out. and done. That's yeah. it. It's sold yeah. out. So they're super hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him, guys. Bring it back. Here oh, we go no, again. No, Round no, two. No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.